All right, we are going to do an interesting little Bible study tonight. You're going to need your King James Bible. We're going to go verse by verse through Psalm 37. Uh, we are going through the book of Psalms right now um, as a family in the morning when we get up. And uh, this Psalm, we read this the other day, and it was just like, wow, uh, what a great encouragement for the times that we're living in right now. Really amazing. So um, hopefully you have your Bible by now. But uh, Psalm 37 says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Is there some of that going on out there in the world today? Yeah. Can you fret yourself because of evildoers? Yeah, as a Christian, you can definitely get caught up with how bad things are in the world right now. It can get very depressing. But look at verse 2. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Very short time left for the devil and his minions. Very, very short. Just a couple years. They've had thousands of years before now. Just a couple years to continue. Just about over for them. Verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. You know why there's electricity still on and there's food uh, in the, on our tables and in our refrigerators and in our stomachs? You know why? Because we trust in the Lord and we do good. That's why. And I'm going to kind of have that as the theme of this psalm here, and that is trusting in the Lord. When you trust in the Lord, you put your faith in the Lord and say, I know He'll take care of us. I know He'll protect us. Lord, please keep the doors open in this country uh, just a little while longer so we can get more people saved. Um, we can get the gospel out there. Um, you do that, the Lord will make sure you're fed. He'll make sure that you're safe. Verse 4, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You know, I never thought that I would get married. Um, in the time that we had left here on this earth, I just was had resigned myself to being a single guy, and I'll just be single. Rapture's not that far off anyhow. But I still desired to get married, and the Lord gave me the desire of my heart. And then after that, I thought, well, okay, you know, he gave me a wife, that's great. You know, we have um, a lot of good times together and gone and seen some neat things and whatever else. And I thought, but I won't be here long enough to have a son or a child, a baby. God gave us a baby. So, uh, why? Well, we delight ourselves in the Lord. I don't delight myself in the ways of the world and the worldly entertainment and whatever else. That's not where I get my joy from. My joy comes from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a really, really neat thing to be saved. I'm so thankful that He sent His Son to die on the cross to pay for my sins. Isn't it a blessed thing to think about that? It's really, really neat. I'll tell you what, this is the kind of stuff you need to be reading in these times. Such an encouragement. Verse 5, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Very true. And He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. It's coming. Don't worry. These evil people, the evil doers of verse 1, they're going to be cut down, like verse 2. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of Him who prospereth, in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Again, we see it there. And it's interesting too there, verse 7. The first part. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. You know, why on earth are we still here on the earth? I mean, the rapture should have happened years ago, you know. And yet some of you out there just got saved not too long ago. Aren't you glad the rapture didn't happen yet? <laughs> yeah. It's great to know that the Lord's waiting. But uh, we're anxious to see Him. I'm anxious to see Him. But uh, you know what? We're to rest in the Lord. I mean, you know, again, if, if Christians go through the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, you can use this as instruction in righteousness for us. How could you really rest in the Lord? knowing that there's a great possibility that you're going to get killed and that you're probably going to, you could lose your salvation if you make the mistake of taking the mark of the beast and things. Pretty amazing. Verse 8, and David, by the way, had the sure mercies of David. It talks about in the book of Romans. He had 
a special grace from God that other people in the Old Testament did not have. David was a type of a New Testament Christian in many ways. Um, verse 8, Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Okay, it's talking about anger, sinful anger. Okay, we talked about that and I had a study on anger, the subject of anger. There's nothing wrong with being angry at this world um, as God sees things. Righteous indignation, you call that. But um, verse 9, For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Hmm. Again, wait patiently for the Lord. And as we wait for the Lord, guess what we're going to inherit when we come back down? Your neighbor, your neighbor has a bigger house than you or something like that? If you would care, I'm just making my point here. They have more land than you. We're going to get it when we come back. Lord's going to come down and He's going to divide up this world and give it to Christians. How about that? Verse 10, for yet, a, for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. After the time of Jacob's trouble, we're going to look down at this earth, and we're going to go, where is St. Peter's Basilica again? Somebody's going to point and say, well, that rubble over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, where were these big military bases and scary things and whatever? Oh, yeah, that pile of junk over there. Verse 11, But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. It's going to be wonderful. Verse 12, The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Hello, <laughs> you know, uh, you see that on this channel, people talking about me, and I see it, people talking about a lot of you out there too. You write a nice comment or something, and people will attack you and whatever else. Yeah, there's plenty of it going on. Verse 13, the Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. Very interesting there. Verse 14, the wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. It's very, very interesting because these guys, they're developing this new world order and all the other wicked things and these uh, laws, hate crime laws, and all these other, other wicked devices to try and snare us. And actually, they're going to fall in them themselves. Their own little laws and their own little problems and judgments and whatever else. This whole world's just going to erupt into violence in the future. They think, you know, we're working towards a one world government and a, a world where everybody's going to get along. Well, you know, it might work for a little tiny bit, but it's going to last too long. The Bible says that in Revelation chapter 6, verse 4, that uh, the Lord takes peace from the earth. Mm -hmm. Not going to work too good for him. Verse 16, A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Amen. You know, sometimes it's very, very difficult. Uh, it's kind of a weird contradiction, you know, to be walking around this world and just looking at people and they got their brand new vehicles. I mean, it's all debt-based, I realize, but just... Stick with me for a minute. But you see people and they got these huge big houses and, and you know, here we're, we're in this place and it's got all these issues with it. <laughs> and it's just like, and yet at the same time I feel like I'm so rich. I feel so wealthy because of the ministry that the Lord's given to not only myself but also my wife. And how much there have been so many blessings through the ministry. People getting saved, people's lives being changed. and It's just such a neat thing. And uh, some of the you out there, I just, I'm looking forward so much to just getting to meet you face to face, being with the Lord, and just being just like, we're together now. Don't have to part anymore. It's wonderful. It's going to be great. Verse 17, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. You know, and again, you know, just, just stick with the Lord. Okay, don't don't uh, start falling for things and, and saying, well, I want to just do worldly things and, and uh, maybe I can, you know, have people help me out there in the world and I can start going to worldly entertainment and stuff just to kind of forget the problems. You don't need to do that. Okay, um, I recommend highly getting out in nature and what the Lord made. 
you know, and, and just look up, walk outside and look up at the heavens and stuff sometimes. You know, you see all throughout the, the Bible, I never did get to do a study on this, I still might in the future, but the, the Bible over and over again compares angels to stars. And so next time you're outside and you look up and you see those stars up there, those could be angels looking down at you. Eternal things right there. I can see them. Say, oh, no, they're, they're gaseous balls of energy, suns and stars and things like this. Proof. But anyhow, let's continue. Um, the Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Amazing. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. Are you ashamed right now of the way things are in this world? Well, I hope not. If you're not part of it, I'm not really ashamed of my life. I'm, I'm thankful that the Lord's gotten me to this point in my life, and I've had to give up a lot of things and whatever. Not had to, but I've given up a lot of things, I should say it that way. Um, because Lord's convicted me about that, and, and it's just like, I don't want this stuff around. And, and uh, you know, I'm always open to, to the Lord saying, hey, you ought to get rid of this, or you ought to get rid of that. Sure, you know. And my inheritance is going to be forever, and um, I don't have to be ashamed in this evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. God's going to provide for us. You know, they're, they're, again, you hear this thing of economic collapse is just around the corner. And, you know, I mean, it has to be at some point in time, you know, um, you know, for them to set up the mark of the beast system. And I've always wondered, you know, is it going to happen before the rapture or after the rapture? And I've never been able to find a really good answer to that. Um, and we'll see here why I believe that in just a minute. Verse 20, But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume, and to smoke shall they consume away. Again, you see this thing over and over again in this psalm, that the wicked are just for a moment, they're going to go, they're going to be like the grass that withers, they're going to be like smoke that, that goes up, and they're gone. You know, you won't even think about it. Look at verse 21, concerning the economy here. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. Very interesting. Because you have the wicked Federal Reserve System, which is not federal and they don't have reserves, and you know our government borrows money for them from them, and it's like we're not going to be able to pay it. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting, kind of ties in there. And uh, of course you have a lot of people that, you know, uh, get themselves drowning in debt and whatever else, and, and uh, you know, not a real good thing there. But the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. You know, important. Verse 22. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. Yep. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Remember that. Remember, no matter how bad things get, the Lord still has you in His hand. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able to bear. Remember that. Verse 25, I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. You saw the study on why can't the lost world understand the Bible. You don't remember Job 28, 28. Uh, the fear of the Lord. You know, um, we're right there near it. I'll just go to it quick. I'm thinking of the fear of the Lord as the beginning of wisdom. Now I can't think of how the other one goes. And unto man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Okay, that is how it went. And to depart from evil is understanding. So here in Psalm... Uh, Verse 27, depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. All right? Departing from evil is understanding. Like we talked about. So, again, that's very important. You don't have to be ashamed of how bad things are in this world if you've cleaned up your own life. And again, I realize there are people that are saved and married to lost people or living with lost people or whatever else. And so it's very difficult for you to be able to depart from evil totally because you're kind of linked up to it. Um, do your best. 
Just stay with the Lord. He'll, he'll work things out. Verse 28, For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Yep. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. Boy, it ties in so well with the thing of, of wisdom and understanding and knowledge and workmanship that we talked about. Uh, it's just really, really interesting. Verse 31, The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. By word have I hid in my heart. Yeah. Such an amazing thing that we can have here. Verse 32, The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. Yeah, got any ideas there, you know? I have my study coming out on that here. But um, verse 33, The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I do believe that we're going to be able to watch the time of Jacob's trouble when we're up there with the Lord. I think John saw it. I think he saw the events of it. And I think we're going to see it. We're going to, you know, I don't know if the Lord's going to make popcorn or anything, you know, but the point is we'll be up there and, you know, we'll be looking down and it'll be pretty entertaining, I feel. You know, and of course, I, I can prove definitely the one point there, uh, Revelation chapter 19, the early part of it, we're throwing a party up there, having a good old time because, you know, we see the great whore being judged, which is Roman Catholicism, not the United States. Sorry. Verse 35, 10 o'clock at night. Not quite the midnight hour yet, but we're getting close. If you know what I'm saying. Verse 35, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Uh, it's very interesting. I, I One of my books here uh, by Anthony Sutton, uh, da, 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 I'm not sure where it is right now. Somewhere around here. Oh, right there. Excuse me. I forget where the thing is at. I don't know if I even have it highlighted. But uh, there was a guy in here. Uh, it's about the order of skull and bones. Yeah, I don't think I have it highlighted. But um, And there was this, this guy in here. A member of Skull and Bones back like in the 1800s or something, and it, it went over all of his belongings that the guy had. I mean, just mansions and estates and land and all kinds of things like this, and, and uh, he passed away. And the average person wouldn't even recognize his name now. It's interesting. I did, at the Way back at the time when he was rich and powerful in Mr. Secret Society, um, he was really a force to be reckoned with. Now, what are, where are his houses and his lands? Gone. Where's the glory of uh, Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom? Gone. I think there's a gate or so or whatever else over there from the ancient city of Babylon uh, in the Iraq area, but uh, where's the, the power of that head of gold, the greatest one world government that's ever been, most powerful? Gone. What about Egypt? Gone. There's no pharaohs over there ruling and reigning and things like this. See? Verse 37. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Very interesting. Kind of uh, neat too there, because in the time of Jacob's trouble, the Lord's actually going to be marking uh, in the forehead the uh, 144,000 sealed Jews. Verse 38. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. It's a, an interesting thing, actually, when you study this out, what's going to happen when we leave at the rapture. We go up, and I believe in the ensuing chaos afterwards that there's probably going to be some war going on there and whatever else, and this man is going to show up, and he's going to restore order, and he's going to go over, and he's going to say, okay, He's going to make a peace treaty between the Jews and the 
Palestinians slash Arabs there over in Jerusalem. And uh, he's going to get the city of Jerusalem, of course, because that's where he's going to rule and reign from. The Antichrist is who I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, then that, that whole time there happens. And it's just very, very interesting because whoever makes it through that thing, I mean, we're talking like half the world's population is going to be killed in that time of Jacob's trouble. And at the end of it, of course, you have the Antichrist and the false prophet, and the Lord casts them down into the lake of fire. And uh, Revelation 19 is what I'm talking about. And then their 200 million man army is just completely wiped out. And then we go down and we gather the nations to bring them to judgment. And the goats are set on the left hand and they go down into the lake of fire too. And the just, they go in and they inherit the kingdom. And we are there to rule and reign with Christ. So it's kind of like very interesting there. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. Again, I mean, if the rapture happens within the next year or two or two or three years or whenever whenever lord decides okay that's enough enough people have been saved it's time it's just so wicked i'm going to end the thing um if it happens in the next year or two we're talking less than 10 years till the events you know of the time of jacob's trouble happen and the wicked are totally cut off boom very interesting verse 39 but the salvation of the righteous is of the lord he is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Wow. The sure mercies of David. You say, well, bro but brother, Psalms was not written to us. That's in the Old Testament. Oh yeah, I know that, but uh, I also know that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You know, I also know that, 2 Timothy 3.16. But isn't that interesting? The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in Him. Yeah. Patiently waiting for the Lord right now. And you say, well, brother, I'm, I'm going through some hard times. Yeah, I've been talking about that. It's, it's getting rough. I know I saw one of you... Uh, comment and said it's it's almost like anxiety sometimes you go into these feelings of anxiety just like you just feel like what am i going to do how much more of this can i take yeah what is that exactly i don't know it could be spiritual attacks and and things like that but you know we were talking about this and um my wife and i and, and uh i almost wonder sometimes if it isn't some of that anxiety some of that weird feeling isn't just the fact of how the Lord feels about this right now. I mean, we're, you know, they're the one part of, of in Revelation, it actually talks about how that God goes into his temple there in heaven and, and there's like smoke coming out of it and, and it's like there's silence in heaven for about the space of half an hour. And, it, you know, John's not saying for a half hour. He's just saying about, he estimates it as the space of and a half an hour, you know, because I know we're outside of time, but he's reckoning as... A man writing it you know and I've often thought about that and it's just like you know it's like God the Father is gonna be so mad at that point in time that we're all just literally just gonna be standing there just like kind of like this just you know just like a looking down at the ground you know kind of looking at each other just like no nobody wants to say anything because <laughs> he's so mad yeah could we be feeling a little bit of that right now as Christians? I don't know. It's a possibility. Uh, I can assure you God's pretty angry right now. He's angry with the wicked. But, uh, you know, I just want to encourage you as Christians. You know, when you start going through some hard times, go back to Psalms. There's a lot of good things in here talking about going through bad times and how the wicked... Uh, are just so vexing sometimes, and David's like, I hate these wicked people. Just, oh, uh, you know, <laughs> I can understand, you know. And I mean, it's just, it's so hard to relate to people anymore, you know. It's just, it's crazy. And uh, I don't know, it's weird. But this is where our comfort needs to come from, right here. Uh, just stay in the Word, you know, and, and just open up the Word of God sometimes and just, just let the Lord speak to you through His Word. And um, he'll, he'll bring you peace. 
And uh, I know this world is very vexing. Again, you know, I've seen some of you write and, they, and you say about how bad it is. You even go to the store and it's just like they're just cramming this satanic music down our throats all the time. You know, and they are. It's so vexing. I mean, you know, who would have ever thought you go into a, a grocery store years and years ago? I mean, back when I was a boy, back in the 1980s, I mean, you'd go into a grocery store, there wasn't rock music playing. You know, it was easy listening or, or you know, we used to call it doctor's office music, you know. And uh, it was like meant to, to keep the customers there and keep the customers interested in buying things. Now it's like I go into a store, it's like, you know, feel like putting headphones on or something, ear protection, you'd still hear it. But, you know, I just feel like just, I'm like, I got to get in here and it's like, and I come out and I'm going, oh, I got this stupid song going through my head now. You know, it's vexing. But I uh, just want to give you a little bit of advice. Proverbs chapter 28. Because I hear this thing, a lot of people say, you know, well, it's going to get bad. You know, the, the posties, they'll do this thing. They say, it's going to get bad. We got to get ready for bad times, you know, and everything. You know, you're just trying to escape before bad times come. Well, let me ask you a question. What would be wrong with that? <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that bad times won't come before we leave, but what would be wrong with us, you know? I mean, we're going through enough headaches and whatever else, the bad things, you know? We don't need to be rounded up and taken to FEMA camps and have our heads cut off or something like that. And then we deserve to leave at the rapture or something. Weird. Weird way of doing things. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1 and here's some advice for you. Okay. Proverbs 28, verse 1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Jesus Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He came first as the lamb that was slain, but he's coming back as the lion. Who comes back with him? We do. Well, then maybe we should have righteousness that's as bold as a lion. When people start to say, you're a hate criminal, we should say, no, I'm not. Let me tell you about the hate criminal thing. Let me tell you what this is. It's about censoring speech. It's, it's disgusting. It's wicked. It is a Vatican-based system where they're trying to silence people and call those who disagree with it heretics and burn people at stake. I will not be quiet. I will not be silent. What is it? Being bold as a lion. You know, you go out into the wilds of Africa and there's, there's this lion walking up and you go, hey, 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 you know, hey, come on, get, get, whoo, yo, go. You'd be crazy. That lion's going to look at you and he's going to go, really? <laughs> you know, you look like a nice little snack for me. I mean, I saw this hunting video years ago and they, these guys were shooting at this lion and everything and they injured him. And the lion ran at the guys that were shooting him. I mean, he's, he's shot, he's bleeding. And he's just like, and he jumps and he like almost takes this one guy down. You know, he jumps at the guy and the guy goes like this to the side and the, and the lion hits his binoculars like, you can see his binoculars going. I mean, it's a terrifying video, you know, and they finally kill the thing. But crazy, you know. I mean, most animals when they get shot, they run away. The lion turns and runs towards the hunters. Why? They're bold. They're very bold. We're supposed to be that way, Christian. We're not just supposed to go, oh, well, the government's coming for our Bibles soon, so I might as well get them ready. I mean, here you go. Take my Bible from me, and I guess I should probably go to jail, too, because I'm so hateful. <laughs> no, no. Fight. Fight. But look at verse 2. Proverbs 28, verse 2. For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof, but by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. What is understanding? Departing from evil. Knowledge is what? Fearing the Lord. Yeah, wisdom and knowledge both come from fearing God. You see, can we have that as Christians right now? Yes. And what does it lead, lead to? The state thereof shall be prolonged. You know, a lot of these economic experts, they're standing around, they're scratching their heads and they're going, I don't understand how the economy is still going. They just keep printing more money. How is it that we still have food on the tables? How is it that we still are doing things? I don't get it. I don't get it. It's quantitative easing and, 
and you know bailouts, banker bailouts, and this and that, and they come up with all these fancy little terms. I can tell you what it is. It's because there's a bunch of righteous, Bible-believing, King James Bible-believing Christians out there today, and they're still bold as a lion. They're still departing from evil. They still fear God, and they're saying, no, we will not back down. Hey, you need to stop judging me because of my sins. No. I love you enough to tell you the truth. You're a sinner. You need to repent. You see? Why should we just let the Catholics take over this country? Openly take over this country? I'll say that. I realize that America is, you know, within the hand of the Vatican. But uh, why should we just be silent? I've had people tell me, you know, man, if you were in my country, you'd go to jail for what you say about the Pope. Well, then I'm just going to have to preach harder here. Well, what if they pass laws? Then I'll preach harder yet. Why? I want to be bold as a lion. I'm supposed to be righteous. That's one of the fruits of the, the Holy Spirit there, the spirit indwelling of, a, of the body of a believer. You know, the book, book of Romans talks about that. So why wouldn't I want to be bold as a lion? We need to be bold as lions. We need to remember the heritage that we have as King James Bible-believing Christians. Remember those that went before us, the great men of the faith, the great women of the faith. There's been some really amazing, strong women that have gone, at, gone before us. And uh, Fanny Crosby, one of the greatest hymn writers ever, you know, these people were bold as a lion. They really were. They didn't compromise. They didn't back down. They, a lot of them came out and they named the Vatican. They said the Pope is the Antichrist, you know. Hey, that's what we're supposed to be doing as Christians. And somebody says, hey, you know, they, they ought to take that Bible from these Bible-thumping Christians. You have a right and a duty to tell that person off. Tell that person, just say, you're the one who's wicked. You're the one who's intolerant. How dare you come after my Bible? I'm not giving up my Bible. Mm -mm, not going to happen. I will not lay down. I will not be silent. I will not have people bulldoze me over and say, you should be ashamed of what you believe. I'm not ashamed of what I believe. Some dumb atheist out there, you know, oh, I, I, how could you believe in a God that would send people to hell? Because that's what the Bible says. Are you going to repent? Are you going to come to the Lord as the wicked sinner that you are, understanding that you actually deserve to be in hell? Are you going to do that? Oh, that's offensive to me. Then go to hell. Just as simple as that. You don't want to live for Jesus Christ? You don't want to be saved? Then go to hell. Simple. We need to be bold as lions. We need to look and we need to see these wicked people out there in this world and we need to say, you know what? Your time's coming. Oh, they're passing all these laws. But brother, they can do bad things. So can God. Do you ever think of that? I mean, I look at groups like the Jesuits. Yeah, they're dangerous. They're very dangerous. They're the most dangerous organization on the planet. I firmly believe that. I believe that they control a lot of the other things, the Masons and the other stuff like that, the militaries of the world and whatever. You know, you get the NSA listening in on things and, you know, whatever else. Yeah, they're bad people. But you know what? God is more powerful. A whole lot more powerful. Turn back to Revelation. Last place we're going to go to here in this little short study. Revelation chapter 3. I believe that there are the seven churches in the book of uh, Revelation, the first uh, chapters 2 and 3 there, um, I believe that those churches are seven literal churches. I believe that they can be made into seven periods in church history, but I believe it's also seven types of Christians. Let's look about this. Revelation 3, verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. What were we just reading back there? The book of Psalms? Interesting, the sure mercies of David. Wow. He that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. Why am I still on YouTube? I mean, do you ever think about that? A preacher as controversial as me? Some of you have some really controversial stuff you put out. Why are we still available on, on YouTube? I mean, why isn't this narrow-minded, bigoted, uh, Google, goony system shut people like me down? You know Why? He that openeth, no man shutteth, and shutteth, no man openeth. 
as long as I stay bold as a lion, as long as you stay bold as a lion, the Lord will keep the doors open. Why? Because I want to see people get saved. That's my real motivation for the videos that I do. I, I love to see Roman Catholics getting saved. I don't hate Catholic people. I hate Catholicism, but I don't hate the Catholic people. Right? I hate Mormonism. I hate Jehovah's Witnesses, but I don't hate Mormons, and I don't Jehovah's Witnessism, I should say. Excuse me. <laughs> you know, I hate the systems, but I don't hate those people. I want to see them get out of it. And I know saved people that have come out of all these different systems. And I praise the Lord for that. And God right now is keeping the doors of this ministry open. And I know that He's going to keep them open as long as I speak boldly. But if I start to shut my mouth, instead of being bold as a lion, being righteous like that, having Jesus Christ speaking His Word, preaching His Word, not being ashamed of His words in this adulterous and sinful generation, as long as we do that as Christians, the Lord's going to keep the doors open. He's going to keep food on the table. He's going to keep those wicked people at bay. We should want that. Verse 8, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength. We are a small, small group of people. In comparison to this world, uh, we are the smallest. We are the ultimate minority, Bible-believing Christians. It doesn't matter what your kindred is, nationality, whatever you want to say, ethnicity. You know, it doesn't matter. If we're Bible believers, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And we are a very small, small group. We have a little strength. And has kept my word. And has not denied my name. Do you have a Bible that you can call God's word? Or do you say, I believe that it's in uh, Greek and Hebrew like my text up here. Okay, then preach out of Greek and Hebrew. I mean, you get, if this isn't perfect, this King James Bible, then you get a nice copy of a, there's your Greek right there. There's the Hebrew right there. Receptus and Masoretic Hebrew. You get that thing and you go out and you preach out of that, you know, out there and have a time of it. For me, uh, I'm just going to go with the Bible that's worked for over 400 years now. They say, well, that's an awfully stupid thing. King James onlyism is indefensible. Whatever. Works for me. Worked for Moody. Worked for Spurgeon. Worked for Whitfield. Worked for on and on and on. I'm just going to be in the realm of dummies then, I guess. We get up there to heaven and we stand around with all those dummies that have been around for the last 400 years that were dumb enough to actually believe this book was God's Word, I'll join their ranks. Gladly. Verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. The Roman Catholic little infiltrators like Stephen Anderson and these people that teach replacement theology that are saying that they are the Jews today, that uh, the church is now the Jews. Uh, well, actually, no, they're not. They're all, those, those people are lying, um, and they're actually going to have to come and worship before our feet someday. Very interesting. Verse 10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Remember we, were, we just read in Psalm 37 earlier? We're supposed to be patiently waiting for the Lord. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Standing on the promises. I will also I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. I'll keep reading here in a minute, but it's very interesting, this term hour of temptation. Um, because that's the only time it actually appears, uh, to my knowledge, anyhow, the hour of temptation there. And a lot of people say, well, the hour of temptation is the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, and that could be. But I'm here to tell you, I think that the hour of temptation also, if it is, if there is some going into the time of Jacob's trouble, I think it's also going on right now. Um, the hour of temptation is, I mean, we are, we are bombarded with temptations right now. I mean, 
you know, the, there's an old hymn, you know, it's, it goes, uh, My foes are ever near me, around me and within. But Jesus, draw thou nearer and shield my soul from sin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just everywhere, the temptations. But how are we kept from it? Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. We don't back down and say, I guess we're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. No, you read the Pauline epistles, it's crystal clear. The body of Christ is leaving before it starts. We're going bye-bye. We're going to be up there watching it, looking down, watching the whole thing. Proven, proven, proven. Not my theory, not my beliefs, just personal beliefs of what we can agree to disagree. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. The Pauline epistles clearly teach that the, the body of Christ is leaving before the time of Jacob's trouble. Sorry if you don't believe that. But you need to study the Bible more. Verse 11, Behold, I come quickly. And you know, you say, well, quickly, you know, that wasn't exactly quick because it's been 2,000 years. It's not quickly. Uh, no, I don't think that that's what the Lord means. I think it means in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Just like that. Behold, I come quickly. It isn't going to be some kind of a thing where we go into the time of Jacob's trouble and we're there and it's like, well, Antichrist just signed the covenant. Ah, oh, boy, okay. Get together around. We got to do some praying here because we got seven years and counting. Uh, you know, no, he comes quickly. One of these days, you're going to be doing something, eating breakfast, taking a shower, driving someplace, reading your Bible, whatever, and it's going to be quickly. There isn't going to be any kind of a uh, I'll be back in five hours or something like that. I mean, you know, those theories are there and stuff like that, but I don't believe that. I think it's, behold, I come quickly. And it's going to be just like that. No time to get right. No time to say, oh, oh, I shouldn't have been watching that. Or, oh, I shouldn't have been listening to that. It's a purifying hope, you see. Jesus is coming quickly. Boom, just like that. And we're leaving. We're patiently waiting for him right now. We're in the hour of temptation right now where everything is just around us is just like, oh, it's so tempting to just want to be like, Lord, I can't take this anymore. I just, I, I'm going out of my mind. Wait a little longer. Wait upon the Lord. Wait for Him. Patiently wait. He's coming. He's coming. Verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Yeah. Amen. Are you going to overcome? I sure pray you do. It gets rough. I'm not going to tell you, you know, you should never go through depression. You should never have any bad feelings. Brother, sister, hang on. It's it's getting rough. It's getting very rough. Lord still is, is being good to us here in, in America or in the UK, you know, some of the other places, Australia and things like that, Germany. Um, there's, there's, I know I'm just thinking about some of our viewers. I know there's some in Sweden too and things. Um, there's a there's a bunch of people from around the world and, that uh, listen to us, but it's getting rough in all of our countries. But you know what? We're still not being executed. We're still not being tortured. Um, praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for that. And the reason for it, as we said earlier, is because a man of understanding, because of a man of understanding, the state thereof shall be prolonged. Proverbs 28, verse 2. And we're supposed to be bold. Bold as a lion. You know, when the next time people start putting you down as, as a Christian and they start to mock you and make fun of you and stuff, oh, you little Bible, oh, you're a Christian, oh, you're going to be beamed up to Scotty or here. You know what you need to think about? You need to think of a bunch of people and they're there and they're chucking their little spears at you and you're a lion sitting there. And you can look at them and you can go, oh. <laughs> you know, or something. Don't probably don't want to growl at them. They think you're possessed or something. <laughs> but, you know, you're a lion. Jesus is a lion. We're one flesh with him. Hey, 
you know what? If you don't repent, this book right here says that you're going to hell. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, you're making fun of my book? I don't care. You're going to see it. You're going to see the truth. You don't want to accept it? You're going to see it. I, I recommend you start reading the book of Revelation because that's your future. All right? I'm done with you, okay? See, yeah, whatever. I don't need to argue with you anymore. If you want to get saved, accept Jesus Christ. If you want to go to hell and burn forever, accept anything else, okay? Goodbye. That's how you treat people. Don't let people push you down and push you down and push you down and you go from being a righteous, bold lion to kind of the little soft doormat or something like that. Mm -mm. No, no. Now's the time when we need to fight harder than ever. That's what we need to do. One more thing I want to go through here, and that is the Church of the Laodiceans, because there's some other interesting tie-ins here. Verse 14, And unto the angel of the Church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. These lukewarm professing Christians make God sick. It's disgusting to God. So what do you think God thinks about these modern Christians of today? Some of these people that are out there, they're lukewarm. They don't care what the Bible says. They get mad at you. You're judging me. You know, I'm a Christian, but you're judging me with that book. I don't care what that book says. Okay. <laughs> they make God sick. Let's look at some more details about these people. Verse 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Perfect description of the modern world. And the debt-based the debt -based wealth. How wealthy are people in reality? Not really. Most people, their money is a, is a number on a computer screen. Uh, there's no little thing at the bank, little metal box with all your cash in it or something like that. That's not there. It's phony wealth. It's all going to be wiped out just like that. Amazing. Verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. If you're a lukewarm Christian right now and you're messing around with things of this world, you still have time to repent. You still have time to switch from being a Laodicean Christian to going over here and being a King James Bible-believing Philadelphian Christian. You say, well, yeah, the King James only is Study the issue. Truly study the issue. Look into the fact that the Nestle's text, which I have right here, the 27th, 28th, and 25th editions, look into the fact that it says right in the preface of the 27th edition that it's made under the supervision of the Vatican. The Vatican that slaughtered tens of millions of Christians down through the centuries. The Vatican that is mentioned in Revelation 17 and 18. And you're going to get your Bible from there? You say, well, but my NIV, your NIV, which I have the new versions down over there, on that shelf. I myself was an NIV user for uh, 25 years. Well, actually, I guess you couldn't say I was using it when I was under 10 years old. Uh, so 15 years I had an NIV. Before then I had a New American Standard Version. I was not born and raised in some King James only cult. I studied the issue. I have books down here, a whole shelf of them right there on the Bible version issue. A whole bunch right in here. I have uh, James White's books, the new one and the old one right there. I have a bunch of other books with people that are critics of the King James Bible. I've studied the issue. And that's why I'm a King James Bible believer. Because I know King James Bible believers, these people down here, they can give me a final authority. They let me know that, hey, God's Word does exist today for English-speaking Christians. I'm holding it. These liars up here like James White, they give you nothing but their own opinions and feelings. So if you're a Laodicean and you're saying, well, I, 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 okay, I understand the King James is good, but I like my NIV, and, and uh, what are you? Neither cold nor hot. You're lukewarm. God, you're, you make God sick. So what can you do? Well, you're counseled there 
to buy of me gold tried in the fire. The righteousness of God there, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. White raiment is righteousness there again. Um, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Look at this, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. You can move from being a Laodicean Christian to being a Philadelphian type of Christian. You can do it. I myself was a false convert up until the time I was 25 years old. I had a, a good uh, get-out-of-hell insurance policy called Faith in Christ. But I did not see myself as a sinner. Other than just in a general sense way, all, you know, all of sin. Yeah, sure, yeah, okay, yeah, you know. But I was not, I had no contrition. I had no, in other words, I wasn't really sorry for the fact that I was a sinner. I wasn't really disgusted by my sins. It was just kind of like, well, I can take Jesus and I can take sin and I can just kind of mesh them together and have a happy life. <laughs> Be just like the world. And it wasn't until I came to the point where I said, I'm just no good. I Whatever I try in this life is just failing. I just... I need to get saved. I mean, I read the Bible and I'm like, I'm not, I have nothing in common with these people. Boy, that changed. Why? I was born again. I became a new creature in Christ Jesus. You know, there's a lot of people out there fighting, uh, saying that a changed life after salvation is a false gospel. Uh, I can tell you that they've not been redeemed, if they truly mean that. Um, I would have fought the same thing back when I was a lost man. Why? I wanted to hold on to my sins. That's the only reason to fight against a changed life is, is because you want to hold on to sins. That's it. They'll scour through the pages of the New Testament trying to find people that are saved and still sinners. In terms of just open, wicked, rebellious sin with no feelings of guilt or anything else. They'll, they'll look for it to try and justify their life of sin. And you know, I do believe that... Uh, up there it says in verse 16, I will spew thee out of my mouth. I do believe that there are modern Christians that are not truly saved. They have the appearance of being in the body of Christ, but actually they're just foreign matter in God's stomach. See, right now what I had for supper is in my stomach. But if I worked hard enough, if I put my finger down my throat and whatever else, it would come out. It's not really part of my body. It's foreign matter within me. You see? Now some of that food that's down there can become part of my body, can be digested and go into my bloodstream and whatever else. Sure. And that's why a lot of these modern Christians, I was raised a modern Christian. Heavy metal, rock and roll kind of a guy, you know, CCM, all the whole deal, new versions, worldly, all that stuff. I was raised that way. 25 years of my life, I was that way. If the Lord were to come back, back in those years, I'd be in the time of Jacob's trouble, thinking that I was a Christian the whole time. Sure, I'm glad he waited. He's waiting right now. If you're not saved, if you don't know for sure, get it fixed up. All right? You say, well, I have a reasonable, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure. There's nothing more important. Okay? I mean, if you're going to go on a trip someplace, you don't just go, Nah, I, I think I got enough packed and I'm just going to walk out, get in the car and go. No, you check things. You make sure the doors are locked. You make sure the windows are down. Are the windows locked? You make sure everything's unplugged and stuff like this. It needs to be unplugged. And you get did, you check and double check your luggage and whatever. You see? That's what you're supposed to do as a Christian. Examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. 2 Corinthians 13 talks about that. Man, I, I just... If you don't know for sure... Get it straightened out. Make sure you get it worked out between you and the Lord. Please do that. Verse 20, Revelation 3, 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Do you realize what we just read there? If you overcome, if you go through this whole modern church system, 
and you come out of it and you switch over to being a Philadelphian Christian, I believe that that promise is going to carry over with you. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Hmm. You talk about an honor. Lord sits up there in his throne and he says, Hey, come here. Sit right here with me. A king? And we as his subjects? And he says, Come on up. I got, I got plenty of room up here. You can sit with me. Is it worth going through whatever you're going through to have that kind of an honor? I mean, is it worth the pain, the anxiety, the nightmares, the, the going through the store, the vexation of spirit, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked from day to day, like Lot was? Is it worth it? Whatever we have to go through, brethren, it's worth it. Stand by the book. Wait upon the Lord. Be patient. He won't let you down. Let's close with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this book. Lord, where would, where would we be without this amazing book, this Word of God, Lord, this King James Bible? I just cannot fathom the life that I would live down here or anybody else would live as a saved Christian if we had no guide for these rough times, if we had no idea what was coming in the future, if all we had was just the doom and gloom forecasters and the, all these people saying that everything's going to fall apart and there's just no hope and whatever else, Lord, I, I just pray, Lord, that, that those that are saved out there would, would remember the hope that we have, that you're going to be catching us up, Lord, soon, and uh, we'll be with you forever, and you'll, you'll protect us and keep us safe. We don't have to worry about it. And even if we get killed down here before you uh, make that time happen, I'm saying individuals, uh, even if that would happen, even if somebody would come and get me and kill me and my wife and, and our son or something, I just, I know, Lord, that you're still going to take care of things and you're still going to provide. And your word says that the dead in Christ shall rise first. So we'll get up to, we get to go up first. So whatever happens, Lord, I know you'll provide for us. I know you'll provide for all the viewers out there, those that are saved. But Lord, if somebody who's, who's lost has made it to this point, um, they have no assurance of salvation. They have nothing. They have an empty profession many times, just like I once did. They need to be born again. And Lord, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would go out and, and shake somebody up that's in that situation and help them to fear, Lord. Help them to understand the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And if they've never had that conversion experience, that true conversion, uh, where they come to you in that broken state and they realize that their life is in a wreck and their life is in a mess, and they come to you by faith, and uh, they're born again, Lord. You save them. They aren't saving themselves. I just pray, Lord, that there would be somebody out there that would hear this and, and that they would, they'd be convicted about that and get saved, make sure that they're saved, because time is short. And I just pray, Lord, that you would help all of us to stand by your word and be encouraged by it, by the precious promises of this book. And I just pray all of these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. That's going to be it. What a blessed book. Uh, just such a neat thing. I mean, as we were coming out of this really bad trial that we went through, I mentioned before, about five days of just, oh boy, just barely keeping our heads above water kind of a thing. I mean, it just it was rough. You know what? The Lord had Psalm 37 waiting for us as we got through it. And uh, we were starting to feel better and everything. And that morning we opened up the Bible and, and uh, started reading and it was just like, Wow. And I said to my wife, I said, you know what? I need to do a sermon on that psalm because it is an amazing psalm for this time. It just lines up perfectly. I mean, every single verse in the entire psalm, it's just like it's, wow, <laughs> just written for us. It's incredible. So please be encouraged, brethren, and, and please be challenged. Um, we don't have to back down. 
Uh, the Lord has called us to take stands and to be bold as a lion. We don't have to be the ones that, that cower and, and, and let them push us around and things. Uh, God's given us freedom. He's given us that open door where we can preach His Word and uh, forget about the, the dangers of what if I get caught or whatever else. You know, uh, I've had the police actually, uh, I've had confrontations with police officers a couple times now because of the ministry. And uh, I remember the first time I was scared to death um, and you know what? You will feel a peace in that time that will blow your mind. You just say, you just pray, and you just say, Lord, God, help me with this. <laughs> oh, boy, you know. And I was, a, I mean, I was very, very shy growing up, so I'm not like a very outgoing guy that likes confrontation. No, no. And, um, you know, I've never been a real great witness, but I'll tell you what, the Lord's have given me opportunities where I've been able to witness to people out in public and, and, uh, I pray for more of them. It's exciting. It's it's neat. And again, you know, that I mean you're this is coming from a guy that had a very difficult time over the years with witnessing to people. Um I told the story before too of a uh, the one time um when we were still down in Pennsylvania, we actually got a phone call from a guy in the military. I think it was like a lieutenant colonel or something like this. And I mean he was, you know, higher up in the military and he's threatened me all kinds of stuff because somebody had sent a tract with our ministry website on it. Somebody sent him a tract. And so he looked up the information and things like this and, and uh, you know, he called me and he's just like, you know, trying to ball me out and threaten me. I know this, this could be very serious and this is an unsolicited tract and stuff. <laughs> and, you know, the Lord just gave me peace through that thing. And I finally turned it around and the guy said, what's the tract say? Well, it's some kind of gospel thing or something. And I said, you're a soldier and you're afraid of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Silence, you know, <laughs> and it was like, well, the fact that it was unsolicited is what has me kind of a little worried. And I, and I said, it's a gospel tract. Why are you so afraid? Okay, well, uh, well, thank you for your time, sir. You know, click, boom. Mm -hmm. The Lord will help you. He will give you that boldness as a lion. Again, this this thing, this incident that happened here in 2015, back in the summer, where. You know, I got up and I was going to do some sermon notes and they, I hear this satanic rock music coming from just like not even 100 yards away, like 50 yards from where I make my sermons here, just right over there. And it was just like I was going, no, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut, whatever, we'll just go do something. And it was just like, I can't do that. I was like, I got to go over and tell, tell this guy off and just say, this is wicked, this is satanic what you're doing. And I was just like, I mean... I got my shoes on and I just like grabbed my Bible and I just stormed right over there. Bold as a lion with the Lord's help. Not my own power. The Lord will do those kind of things for you. Stand by His Word. Be encouraged, brethren. There's not much time left. Keep that in mind, please, as you go through these hard times and things. So... Just wanted to do that video really quickly as an encouragement. Um, just really, really neat promises in Psalm 37 that we have, and then as we have as, as Christians, how it lines up so perfectly with what is going back, going on back there. So that's going to be it. <laughs> I got a bunch of other projects I need to work on, so I need to. Zip. So we will see you in the next video. Thank you for praying for us.